I'm not usually a complainer, but I'm really angry. And if you're a woman over 40, no, 35 even, you should be too. Because get this, there are almost 1.3 billion women in the world over 40, yet most medical schools worldwide offer very little training in menopausal and perimenopausal health, even for gynecologists. So when we women go to our doctors seeking help and guidance for our symptoms, many of which can be truly debilitating for some people, most doctors are absolutely clueless when it comes to even understanding what we're talking about, let alone help us. So today, we're diving headfirst into the whirlwind of perimenopause and menopause and the complete lack of care and attention that the medical world gives it. And then I'm gonna tell you how to get the medical support that you need, that we all need. Okay, let's dive in. I don't know about you, but no healthcare practitioner ever told me when I was in my 40s that there are 34 officially recognized symptoms of perimenopause and menopause. And most of them, you know, seem totally unrelated to each other, so they kind of took me by surprise. And I know I'm not alone. I started to feel not like myself in my mid-40s, and out of nowhere, I started having severe anxiety for the first time ever in my life, with panic attacks and depression too. I had absolutely no idea it could all be related to decreasing hormones. When I finally talked to my doctor about it, he didn't mention declining hormones or perimenopause. I didn't even know perimenopause was a thing back then. My doctor just offered me anxiety medication and sent me on my way. Have you guys had any experiences like that? Then, over the next 13 or so years, I had just about every perimenopausal symptom there is. Oh, except fear of driving. But I know some women do experience that. That's a thing. But they shift and change as you age. Just last year, I started experiencing horrible stuff down there as a result of menopause. I talked about that in my last video, and wow, the response was unbelievable. I told a kind of embarrassing story about an experience I had due to one of the many bodily changes that happens in menopause, something which I didn't even know was a result of menopause. Well, clearly I'm not alone, because thousands of women watched, shared, and commented on that video. Hundreds shared their personal stories about how caught off guard they were by their symptoms. And by the way, if you are one of the women who left a comment on that, thank you for being so open and honest with your feelings and experiences. You know, it really helps others feel prepared or validated, knowing they're not alone. Here are some more of those comments. And this is why I get so mad and sad. My doctors don't seem to have a clue. It's heartbreaking. I feel as if I'm suffering all by myself. I'm so tired of having to beg my doctor to do a hormone test for me. She said she doesn't see the need. I know there are options, but both my primary and my gynecologist have no clue. Another woman wrote, I have found gynos to be very cold in my older years. They were more concerned when I was young in my birthing years. Now when you go see them, they half listen. They don't even examine you anymore. I mean, think back to when you were a young girl, right? Remember how your mom or maybe your aunt sat you down and talked to you about getting your period? I mean, that prepared you for what was to come, right? And when it came to pregnancy, wow, I mean, gosh, the amount of information out there is insane. It's great, there are books, apps, classes, and countless doctor's visits, all designed to prepare you for every possible change your body will go through at every moment, it seems. So you really know what to expect when you're expecting. But what happens when we reach the other side of our reproductive years? Crickets. Suddenly, it's like we're thrown into the wilderness without a map. Our moms didn't tell us much, at least mine didn't. Our doctors don't seem to even know much, much less tell us about it. Some of our doctors don't know this stuff at all or don't talk to us about it. I remember when I went to see my primary care physician because I started to have bad headaches, ringing in my left ear, really bad dizziness. Oh, and my skin was getting so itchy all the time, I'd break out in hives all over my body. I mean, like, every day. Well, my doctor said maybe I had a tumor in my head near my ear. Well, obviously I'm grateful that he checked me out and ruled that out. But he said since it wasn't that, he didn't know what could be causing my symptoms. He said the hives was due to stress, even though I told him I really wasn't stressed. So I went to my dermatologist. He didn't know either. So I went, call me naive, but I'm just so shocked that most doctors seem so completely in the dark about menopause. Like, 
you'd think they'd know at least about the problems that are extremely common, like painful sex and urgency incontinence. And if they are aware of it, you know, I'd wish they'd mention it as a possibility ahead of time, so we're not suddenly caught off guard unawares like that story I told you guys last time. Because there are things that can alleviate those things. I told you guys about vaginal estrogen last time. Well, I also just started PT sessions with a physical therapist recently who specializes in pelvic floor strength. <laughs> but I'll tell you about that in another video. But like, I didn't even know that was a thing until a friend of mine who's a physician and menopausal herself told me about it. But when I went to make an appointment, there was a three or four month waiting list. So clearly there's a huge need for this, but many of them don't don't even take insurance. Mine does, but what's the average menopausal or postmenopausal woman supposed to do? Just suffer in silence the rest of her life? Listen to this. I'm 49 and will be turning 50 at the end of the month, and I get urgency incontinence when I don't get enough fluids. And yes, it's embarrassing. As of the last six months, I've been going through perimenopause, and within the last month, the symptoms have really gotten bad. Not sleeping due to hot flashing, my face has been turning red, bright red, chills, feeling fatigue, backache, sometimes a breath shoots a sharp pain in my vagina for no reason. Imagine being at work and a pain hits you down there and you jump, trying to pretend to be shifting in your seat or that you were stretching out your leg from a cramp. People looking at you like, are you okay? No, you're not. Not really. Some perimenopause symptoms can be decreased with HRT, hormone replacement therapy, but doctors don't even seem up to date with information on that. And not everyone's a candidate for it, and you can't take it forever. So this is why I get so frustrated. I'm really fed up with a lack of education, lack of clinical studies, and lack of just plain general knowledge we get from the medical community about menopausal health. I mean, every single woman who lives to age 51 and a half, that's the average age of menopause, will go through it. That is basically half the population. And get this, you guys. <sighs> Deep breath, Rena, okay. 60% of women with significant menopausal symptoms seek medical attention, yet nearly three quarters of them are left untreated. You wanna know why? Here you go. In the US, for example, there are almost 72 million women aged 45 or older. That's almost half of all women in the country. Yet guess how many healthcare practitioners are certified in women's menopausal health? 1,100. And only a fraction of those are actually physicians. Yeah, that's right. So we've got a few hundred menopause trained doctors to serve almost 72 million people. And it's not just the US. There's a huge lack of menopause specialists in the UK, too. In England, one report found that there were almost 7,000 women on waiting lists for menopause treatment. They had to wait over seven months on average for a referral to a specialist clinic. You may have heard about that Mayo Clinic survey of medical residents in the United States found that 20% had received no menopause training whatsoever. Zero, not even a single lecture. Matter of fact, less than 7% of medical residents, you know, those are the doctors who finished medical school, less than 7% of them said they felt prepared to help women experiencing menopause. 7%. So when we bring up our concerns and symptoms, it's no wonder many of us are met with dismissive comments, inadequate advice, or just <laughs> sometimes blank stares. We're often told it's natural and we just have to deal with it. Well, come on. I mean, most health issues are natural, right? And yet we treat those. Cancer's natural. Arthritis is natural. Bad knees are natural. Erectile dysfunction is natural. Why isn't menopause training required for gynecologists, internists, general practitioners, and nurse practitioners? The truth is, the medical world has really failed us women when it comes to menopausal health. <sighs> okay. Hang on, this video is not about bashing doctors or the medical world. We're all grateful for modern medicine. I've had some excellent doctors and nurses, and I'm sure you have too. But when it comes to women's menopausal health specifically, honestly, it feels like we're back in the 1920s. Well, actually, we kind of are, <laughs> and that's not a secret. It's commonly known, at least in the United States. Dr. Philip Serrell, Professor Emeritus at the Yale School of Medicine, recently admitted doctors are not helpful. They haven't had training, and they're not up to date. Well, I'm not a doctor, but I want you to know I see you. 
I get it. I understand. Your voices, your stories have been flooding in, showing a really vivid picture of this silent but seriously frustrating struggle. Take this one, for example. Doctors don't tell you that your bladder can drop. Mine did. I thought my guts were falling out. It has been terrible since that happened. My husband passed away three years ago. Our love life went to zero before he passed away. But I don't even feel desirable enough just to have a male friend and have to explain this dilemma. Or this one. Painful sex? I liken it to having sex with a serrated bread knife. Thank you for talking about this. I hope it helps younger women be more prepared. Then there's... It seems like down there it's beginning to completely collapse. Literally, my vagina has started disappearing. It's gone, under the boon, nothing. So of course I can't have sex anymore. In fact, I don't feel a woman anymore and I am completely useless. Also incontinence, it has a huge impact on my self-esteem. Guys, these aren't just comments. These are a rallying cry for recognition, understanding, and huge change in how we talk about, treat, and support women through menopause. And it's not just about the physical symptoms or even the mental issues, you know, brain fog and such. It's about feeling seen, heard, and acknowledged. So here's my call to arms, ladies. <laughs> I feel like you're my personal friends. We need to demand more from our healthcare providers, more from medical schools. It's high time they update their knowledge, update the curriculums, and start educating women early on about the realities of perimenopause and menopause. I'm on a mission to get medical schools to not only teach, but require courses on menopausal health. Please share your thoughts, feelings, and experiences in the comments. It's the best way we women can help each other. Okay, so I promised I'd tell you how to get the information and the support you need. In my opinion, the best resource is the North American Menopause Society, which actually is now called simply the Menopause Society. I think they're about to update their website, but even if they haven't, you can find a ton of really reliable information and answers to your questions there. They even have a directory of healthcare providers by location who are certified in menopausal health. And it's not limited to just North America either. Their website is menopause.org. I'll add the link below. I'm not affiliated with them in any way. It's just a great resource I want to share. And it's a nonprofit, so they don't take advertising money from Big Pharma or any companies for that matter. Oh, and sorry, if you're new here, let me introduce myself. I'm Rena Hedeman, founder of Thrive After 45. And to all of you, at the risk of sounding <laughs> maybe a little corny, I just want you to know something. Your body matters. Your voice matters. The conversations we have here can lead to real change. So please leave a comment, share your story, your struggles, and your victories, your tips. Together we can break the silence around menopause and turn it into a roar. Let's build a world where every woman feels prepared and supported and empowered. Not just when she's young, but throughout every stage of her life. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. Sending you all so much love and light. Until next time, stay strong, stay informed, and thrive.